so one of the ways that really uh, we express love that many people don't realize is by public identification with them. When there's someone that you love, it's really easy to be able to say, you know, that is my son, that is my daughter, that is my wife, that is my husband. And those words are very powerful. Really, divorce is, is terrible, and it is a rejection, but there's a rejection greater than divorce. And that's when a mother or father rejects their son or daughter. When the mother and father say, you are no longer a part of our household, you're dead to me. As happens in many cultures, when someone identifies with Christ, they take that as a personal affront. And maybe they see something that a lot of other pe people don't see but should see. The following Christ is a very powerful thing, and it will offend mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, if they get it. If anyone has an attachment with any of their siblings or any of their natural family that is greater and higher, more deeper, more affectionate, more devout and more loyal than one's commitment of love to the Lord, they really don't understand who the Lord is. They don't really get how magnificent he is, that he is God in the flesh. But they've, what they've done is they've distilled him down into like this weak, sappy, sugary liquid that has no effect on people except sometimes just too sweet and you want to almost spit it out. Jesus is so nice. He's nice to everyone. He's kind to everyone. He loves everyone. He's uh, going to be affectionate no matter what. He's going to be understanding no matter what. But Jesus is, represents God, the Father. And it's another kingdom. And it's in collision with this kingdom on the earth. There are demonic powers that absolutely hate Jesus. And there are many who reject Jesus. Jesus is looking for his family to stand with him. Even though when they stand with them, in a particular way, from love and devotion, they will upset people. Because there's a conflict between two kingdoms. Jesus and the culture can never agree. The culture wants to exalt us so that our devotion to Jesus is easily compromised. We make him small. I was reading the other day about what's happening in the, the church in America and how more and more people are leaving the church, more and more people are becoming dull in reference to who Jesus is. And they, when, they, when they inquired of these people, they asked him basically why. And it wasn't that they didn't like Jesus anymore. They just didn't have time. They had no time. They said they're very busy. So you have two spouses working. You have many activities with the young people. And they're consumed in the day-to-day. The -day. And to go to church is like, why? Am I really getting all that much from it? What's the point? But we are people who say, from the position of the son whom, whom we represent, we say, you have the time. In fact, the time that you have is for a reckoning of who Jesus is and who you are before him. You have, in fact, that is why you have time to begin with. You have to confront the creator of time. And you have to understand who he is. And you have to be able to make a decision that looks like you get it. But many times people think 
I don't know if I really want to talk about my relationship with Jesus with other people because they don't seem all that interested. Or I, I'm, I'm afraid that they might be all upset. I don't want to make them upset. When I grew up, my parents were really firm. They said, don't talk to anybody about religion or politics because it might upset them. It's very rude to do so. Of course, the reality is, it's very cold not to talk about Jesus. Because Jesus loves every single person. He loves me, he loves you intensely. When he was on the cross, and he only went to the cross for us, he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? The clouds grew dark. There was an eclipse. He cried out with a loud voice. He had become a sin offering. He himself, in a mystery, had become sin for our sake. Jesus didn't literally go to hell and experience hell the way we'd understand it, but he did experience hell on the cross. Total and complete absence from the loving embrace of God. And he did that because of the love of God. He did that because of the love of us. He sacrificed himself because it wasn't optional. It was absolutely necessary. It was absolutely necessary to rescue us from hell, from the consequence of sin. And he wanted us to know that he loves us. Even though we have rejected him, he loves us. God demonstrates his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What loyalty he has, what deep love and affection he has for us. So that in John it talks about all those who would receive them, receive the power, the authority to become children of God. We've been adopted by the one who created. So we're created and then recreated because of the love of God in Christ. You know, this is a message that everyone needs to hear. There needs to be a testimony of who he is. And you know, a lot of people love to worship, and I do, I, I'm one of them. But when we think of worship, we think of singing and we think of praying. But we don't think of offering, usually not so much. But the Lord is inviting us to be just like the Son who loved the Father to the point where he actually had to experience great difficulty, where he had to experience suffering for the sake of love. That was worship, and that's our worship. We are called to worship, to be an offering to God. And what that means is, Lord, I'm going to identify with you. I'm going to say clearly and loudly, if I don't say it by words, I'm going to say it by a testimony. I love you. I know you love me. I am your son. You are my father. I am a part of your family. You've invited me into your family. You affirm me as a son or as a daughter. I am going to affirm you. I'm going to affirm you at great expense. Not just financially, there's a part to that. Not just time, again, that would be a part of that. But I'm going to give up my ego. I'm not going to care what people think about me. I'm going to be so possessed by your love, and you have given me this love, that I really don't care if people respect me, understand me, pat me on the back. I don't care if at times they're mad at me. And again, we're not trying to be affronting when we talk to others about the Lord, but there is a dimension where we're saying, without the Lord, you are lost. It's not like, you know, the Lord would really help your life out. You'd be a lot more happier. You'd have a better family. You know, you'd be more patient with your children. Accept Jesus so that you can be a nicer person. That's not true. Embrace Jesus as king and as Lord because without him, you're cursed. And that's the case for everyone. We are the people who have been deeply affirmed by God himself. So we see Jesus when he gave up his life as an offering, not only on the cross, but before his, well, just right when the ministry began. 
He goes and he's baptized, which is a symbol of him dying. He dies for the Lord and in the Lord. And his father says, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The father affirms Jesus in his testimony. Now we know the father always loved Jesus. But you know, there's a way when you give testimony. There's a way where you're able to experience the pleasure of God in a way that you cannot when you do not give testimony. There's some dimension of seeing who God is and how much you are related to him when you and I are willing not to care about ego, not to care what people are thinking about us or how they're talking about us, but care more about loving him and affirming him. We will not reject him. In the scripture reading that we said today, we read today, it says that if you deny me, I have to deny you. And the reason is because those people who know me would never deny me. They would know who I am. And they would want to talk to others about who I am. These are the people who know my love. These are the people who love me. And you say, I am yours, Lord. And that's our call. Our call is to be like Paul, where it says, the love of Christ controls us or constrains us. That since I know that one man died for all, so I must make confession and die for my, my myself, must give up my life on his behalf that others might know him as well. This is what we're all called to. We've been anointed by God for this. We've been personally called by God to give testimony. And when we give testimony, out of love, we are worshiping the Lord. We are saying to the Lord and to others, the one I speak about is precious to you, not just for me. And as we speak and give testimony of who the Lord is, what happens at that moment is the Lord anoints us yet more. All of a sudden, we think different thoughts. All of a sudden, we have an experience of the Lord we didn't have before. That's my experience. I'm sure that's many of your experiences as well. There's a testimony of his pleasure when you and I purpose to share the love of God with others, even in a difficult situation. And the Lord will want to make it really clear. I'm not leaving you alone. I love you. I'm your father. I am with you. Jesus, our brother, is with us. He leads us. And that's the call of the church. We may not have been at Pentecost, but we've received the fruit of Pentecost. We've received the results of Pentecost. We can be witnesses of Christ, and we are to be witnesses of Christ. We talk about how that we have received faith and love from God. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts. We also have received faith from God. Here's an expression. You know that if you talk to someone about the Lord, and they truly surrender to, to, them, to him because you've spoken those words, they will be changed in the moment and eternally. You have faith for that because you have a testimony about that. You know that it's true. Where did that come from? It came from God himself. God showed, your, showed himself to you, then faith is ignited in you, and now you want to share it with others. We talk about the love of God poured on our hearts. Well, the more that we share love, that means we exalt him and forget about ourselves. That we identify with him and affirm that he is our father and that he is more than life itself. Other people will begin to see him and they'll think, my whole life should be about this one. Time, yes. And if I don't have enough time, I'm going to make time. Time for the timeless one. And if I don't have, if I lose something, if I'm not able to experience a certain luxury because now I don't have the finances for a particular kind of comfort, we don't care because our greatest comfort is hearing from heaven, this is my son, this is my daughter with whom I am well pleased. Thank you, son and daughter, for your testimony. I will never leave or forsake you, and I will testify before the angels and through you to others that you are mine and that you are precious and that everyone you speak to, I have created and I love them. Thank you for being a witness and testimony 
for walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, for allowing that love I poured out in your heart to pour through your lips. Thank you, my son and my daughter, for understanding what life is all about and that you give yourself to compassion and that you care about others just as my son did, just as others have done throughout the life of the church. You now are the testimony. And I say to you, my sons and daughters, I am willing and working to my good pleasure in you. And I smile over you when you are willing to move past discomfort and move into love, to love those who do not know me and wish to know me if they only could hear a voice that's stronger than just nice words, a voice that comes from a testimony of a changed life and one who has been affirmed by God himself. Amen.